I'll tell you right now, I'm prepping. I don't have all of the answers, but I can see the writing on the wall. There's so much shady stuff going on right now that I just don't trust relying on somebody else for the resources I need for my very survival. And even though I don't have the answers, I'm doing a lot of research and I'm just going to share with you guys what I learn as I learn it. Today, I'm putting in an off-grid solar panel system that is not hooked up to the grid in any way, shape or form. And I'm gonna share with you what I learned along the way, but I'm also not just going to tell you what I figure out. I'm going to take the time to talk to the product experts and if you guys ever watch my channel before you know that i don't just tell you what i think i actually bring the sources in and i question them i try to find out deeper information and take it to the next level i don't take it at surface value because that's not what my job is my job is to help you guys make good informed decisions and today we're going to be checking out a brand new solar system solar panel system that we've already installed We've had it up and running. We're gonna find out exactly how well this operates and then talk to an engineer and find out a little bit more about this system and if it could be right for you guys. So let's do that right now. Thank you, sir. All right, welcome to the lodge. Hi, Sonoka. This is our off-grid homestead. We are miles from the local closest power source. We got Cassidy and Tarzan over here. Tarzan, how you doing, buddy? Tarzan is Cassidy's significant other out here in the woods. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. How's things going out here? Good. And how did you figure out how to do that? Have you ran one of these before? Uh, we've done solar a little bit in the past, but... You did it in Hawaii, right? Yeah, but... Um, Anything to this extent? No, no. At most, we only had about 600 watts. And <laughs> this is uh, altogether 1,800 watts. As it is right now, so it's 600 watts per row, and I have them wired up. There's three cables going to the greenhouse right now. It's about 600 watts per cable. All right, so let's take a look at how we actually have what, what we did here. Nothing fancy. I do want to put these connectors behind. I don't know if the snow will grab it. I would bet they would. Yeah. I bet that snow would grab it. So you got to get it behind. But here's a, here's a scoop. It took Frankie a day to frame, uh, frame this in, didn't it? I would say about four hours. About, <laughs> about four. Pretty quick, yeah. Four hours, and then uh, and you got yourself a... A power supply that has met all of your needs to this point. Yeah, if you look in there, all the batteries, they're charging, or they're powering the fans, but they're probably also at 100% right now. Okay, so <laughs> you have it powering the fans to the greenhouse. And the actual battery storage system is always inside, right? Because yeah. with that, if you leave that out, it's going to get wrecked. Yeah, we do have enough uh, cables to run it into the yurt, though. And I was thinking of doing that, but not until I figure out a way to uh, run the cables, like uh, maybe an old hose or something. And those batteries are lasting you how long? Um, they haven't died yet. <laughs> we haven't even gotten them all the way down. No. Yeah. So. so you guys have <laughs> constant power. Yeah. yeah. The, Nine the panels fans, and constant power. The fans in there are going constantly, 100% of the time. You have two fans going. Two One fans for the greenhouse always and going all fans. day for the, green, for the greenhouse, for the plants inside, because the greenhouse is too hot. Otherwise, they'll like... Cook? Yeah. A, okay. little, a little bit too much. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Constant power with these solar panels. We'll see about the winter time, you know. Yeah. That'll be a lot different. But if it's meeting all your power needs at the moment, yeah. we're good to go. Definitely. All right. Well, cool. Oh, and if you guys want to know what her nickname was growing up, Mojo Jojo. <laughs> Mojo Jojo. From the Powerpuff Girls. I'm the evil monkey. <laughs> <laughs> She's been our evil monkey since she was this tall. 
Cassidy Mojo Jojo. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about that because mom still calls me that every time I see her. <laughs> calls you Mojo Jojo? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Mojo, I, thought Jojo, you were gonna say, I thought you were going to say Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit was <laughs> her other nickname I gave her for And her. I found out what that meant like a few years ago <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, but Not I meant it with ago. love. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right, you guys. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reach out to one of the engineers from Dabson and give him a shout and see if we can't get some of these questions answered. So let's... Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna reach out to him in just a minute. Let's go inside and check out how these batteries look and what they've got set up. Okay, so here's, this, the panels are one part, but this is the actual brains of the unit, right, Thomas? Yeah, um, this is where you get all the power from, and this is where most of the panels collect into. And that's, this one feels a lot heavier than this one, so I think the battery and the satellite battery is a lot heavier. So what is this? What is this down below? This is the satellite battery? Yeah, it's actually really interesting. I think that whenever this has a good charge, or even if they were both at like 50%, because of this fat wire that's connected to them, the energy from the panels appears to go directly to this one to charge this one first. And then charge this one secondary. So I mean, it's a you've pretty got, smart setup. You've got three fans in this greenhouse. Yeah. And, and it's still and, showing 100%. And it's 100%. <laughs> I'm bringing in more than I'm using. Jeez. Right, so we might be all right this winter. I could run like five fans. So it's working good. 100%, three fans going, greenhouse is operating. Have you actually used your tub for anything more than blanket Once. storage? <laughs> was it too much work? It was like seven hours <laughs> of like pumping this thin. <laughs> yeah. And then hauling it to the fire to heat it up and hauling it back. How's the water though? It's, it's good. Great. Yeah, we've been drinking it. It's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, it's better than city water. This is old dishwater, so it's all brown. Just use it for uh, plants. All right. Well, next up, let's see if we can't get an engineer from Dabson on the phone and get some of these questions cleared off. You can't see it, but listen. We have planes that fly over here every day spotting drugs. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Every day I've ever been out here. There's always been a plane out here spotting drugs somewhere looking for it. <sighs> Looks like the pond is drying up. This drought is terrible. Don't let Sinokio. Oh jeez. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> you and your stripper pole. It's so fun. Thomas does it too. It's a freaking blast. You guys should try it. All right, guys. I've got Alec on the phone. He's the product expert from Dabson. Alec, can you hear us okay? Yeah, all is well. This is Alec from Dabson. Thanks for having me here. All right, thanks for coming on, Alec. I just got some quick questions for you that I want to get cleared up right straight from the source. What is the total cost of right. building this system with Dabson products? So you got one DBS 2300 power station and one DBS 3000V uh, extra battery and that combined is $2,699. And you also got nine, uh, nine solar panels and they are expected to cost around $1,500. So combined cost of the whole system is $4,199. Now I know that sounds like a bitter pill to swallow you guys, but think about it this way. You put the money up front and now you've got free electricity for uh, free power for as long as you, the sun is shining basically and this system is working. And let's talk about how does this solar how does this home solar panel system actually work, Alec? Uh, for the whole for the system to work is really simple. It's all plug and play. You just uh, connect the three 200 watt solar panels in series, and you plug the other end to the DBS 2300 power station, and you connect the other six 200 watt solar panels in series, and connect them to the and connect the other end to the DBS 3000B as a battery, and then that will work. There's no extra wiring. There's nothing you've got to do. You can just you just plug this together, connect it up, and you're in business. You don't need a degree to figure this out. You just got to have a t little bit of common sense, correct? 
Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you something. There's tons of options out there for systems like this. What makes Dabson better than other choices that people may have out there? Why would they choose Dabson? Dabson battery got 4,500 4, cycles and a normal lithium-ion phosphate battery um, offer a maximum of 3,500. It's 1,000 1, more, 1, cycles. 1, more, 1, cycles. more cycles. How many, what does that convert to years of use or does it even? Well, uh, if you use it uh, like three times a week, we calculate you got like five more years to use. Five more years? Yeah, five more years if you use it three times a week. Okay, uh, are they weather resistant? Because, Mike, I mean, we're going to be hiking these things in and out. We're in northern Minnesota. We're in the worst possible climate. How well are these things going to hold up long term? Well, the power station and battery actually need to be kept in a dry environment, uh, better kept in a safe room. But the solar panels, they are IPCCA waterproof, and they can weather some of, some of the worst environments you can see. IP68, you said? Yes, IPCCA waterproof. Dang. Okay. What if you're not a, What if you're not there? What if you leave for a week and you leave everything hooked up? Is this gonna? Am I gonna come back and find everything fried out, or what's gonna happen? No, uh, the DBS twenty three hundred has a built in BMS uh, battery management system uh, that has overcharge protection. You don't need to worry about overcharging, overcharging the batteries. They will just uh, stop charging and once it stands, it's one hundred percent. Nice. Okay, so what about a one stop shop? Like when I was looking for a system and trying to figure this out on my own, I was finding I had to get my panels from here and the inverters from there and wires from another place. Can guys just go to Dabson.com and find it all right there? Yes, yeah, Dabson.com, pretty simple. D-A-B-B-S-S-O-N.com. You can find all the Dabson products here and you can find all the digital coupons uh, discount we are using, uh, discount we are presenting now. So Dabson.com, it's a one-stop shop. You can get your panels, wires, inverters, battery storage, everything you need so that it's a plug and play and you're in business. Is that right, Alec? Yep. Yeah. Just go to Dabson.com and check out the product you need. Perfect. Thank you, Alec. All right, you guys. Well, that's Alec from Dabson.com. Uh, um, Alec, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to wrap this video up with these guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me here again. Thanks, Alec. I don't know about you guys, but I'm nervous. I'm looking at what's happening in this country right now, and it really puts me at, at alarm. I look at the division in the country. The line is getting drawn very clear of people that completely trust the government, and people that want nothing to do with the government and don't trust it in any way, shape, or form. And I think those people that don't trust the government are get, starting to outweigh the people that believe the government has our best interests at heart. I don't think the government does. I think the government has the people that, they're, that are in power's best interests at heart and they're leveraging that and they're weaponizing the different branches of government which makes me nervous about the entire United States in general. So my question to you guys is, do you have anything for emergency backup power and what does that look like for you guys? I'm also thinking, do I go with a diesel powered generator, but then I'm dependent on diesel fuel. What if that isn't available? What do you guys have going on in your neck of the woods, if anything at all? But that's covering, that's gonna cover it for today. That's it for this one. God bless. Go get them, you guys. And whatever you do, try to make the world a better place than you found it. That's what I. That's the way I try to work. See you on the next one, you guys.